let's face it, we only have one life to live here on this earth. So we all want to get something out of it. We all want to reap a harvest, as it were. But sometimes it feels like life is just a drought. So you have to ask yourself, what exactly does a harvest look like in the middle of a drought? Hi, I'm Bernie Diamond. Welcome again to Christianity Works as we kick off this brand new series of messages called Reaping God's Harvest in My Life. And yes, we are all looking to get something out of life. I mean, let's face it, life is hard work. We have to put in a lot of effort, whether it's into a marriage relationship or bringing up children or, or growing our financial situation or, or at work. We put in a lot of effort into life. So what harvest are you looking for? What harvest are you looking to reap in your life? Right now, what is it that preoccupies your thinking? What, what do you dream of achieving? What are you hoping for? Is it a better family life? Is it bringing up those difficult teenage children? Is it a better job? Are you looking forward to a holiday? What is it in your mind right now, in your life right now, that you're hoping to achieve, hoping to receive, hoping to get some benefit, some return on all that hard work and all that investment. We're going to talk about reaping God's harvest in our lives. Because the danger is that, that for those of us who do believe in Jesus, for those of us who claim to be Christians, who claim to be trying to be disciples of Jesus Christ, the danger for us is that we go chasing after the wrong sort of harvest. We go looking for the harvest in the wrong place. Now, there's nothing wrong with trying to get fulfillment out of my job. There's nothing wrong with trying to bring up children. Those are all very, very good and necessary things. But we can get our priorities out of whack. We can start chasing after the things of this world and discover that they simply don't satisfy. Before I became a Christian, I chased after success and career and money and wealth and the truth is that none of those things really ever satisfy us. So I really want you to think about what it is that you're chasing after in your life. Because this is a, a practical, rubber-hits-the-road series of Bible teaching about reaping God's harvest in my life. And today, the thing that I'd like to talk about is actually planting seed in the middle of a drought. I mean, any farmer who wants to re reap a harvest has to invest in buying some seed, has to till the soil, has to plant the seed. And when the going's tough, when there's a drought, the last thing sometimes that we feel like doing is planting good seed. In fact, when you think about it, planting seed in the middle of a drought is absolutely 100% counterintuitive. And in any case, when you're traveling through that drought, you really do start asking yourself, does God really want to bless me? I mean, the going's tough, it's hard work, I'm tired, the kid's difficult, my marriage is perhaps not what it should be, um, things at work are hard, my finances are tight. Does God really, truly want to bless me? Well, let's answer that question first before we look at what it means to plant a seed during a drought. Come with me, if you, if you have a Bible, to Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 to 31, because we're going to look at the very last act of creation to answer this question, does God really want to bless me? So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God. He created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. 
and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for good food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning on the sixth day. But the very last act of creation wasn't to create humanity, which most people would think was the last act of creation. The very last thing that God did before he was done, before he rested on that seventh day, was to give all of it to us. The very first act of generosity in history was for God to give the whole of creation to us. Look, see, I have given you every plant, everything. Go and subdue it. Go and multiply. And throughout the Bible, we see that God does indeed want to bless us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. James chapter 1, verse 17, Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Does God want to bless you? Absolutely he does. That doesn't mean the latest BMW 7 Series sitting in your driveway necessarily. That doesn't mean massive wealth and riches and living in a big house for everybody. This is where people get it wrong. I was at a church service once where the preacher said, hold your wallet up and pray to become a millionaire. That's ridiculous. But God does want to bless us. And when we're traveling through a drought, honestly, the best thing that we can do is plant good seed. Now, we're going to look at someone who did that. His name is Isaac in the Old Testament, the son of Abraham. And in the middle of a drought, he did two very counter intuitive things. Come with me again into the Bible because that's what this program is all about. It's about opening up the Word of God and seeing what God has to speak into our lives today. The most important part of this message is not what I say. It's what the Word of God says. Genesis chapter 26 verses 1 to 5. Now there was a famine in the land besides the former famine that had occurred in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Gerar to King Abimelech of the Philistines. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said to him, Do not go down to Egypt. Settle in the land that I will show you. Reside in this land as an alien, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and to your descendants I will give all of these lands, and I will fulfill the oath that I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven, and will give to your offspring all these lands. And all the nations of the earth shall gain blessing for themselves through your offspring, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So there's a famine in the land. He's in the land of the Philistines. He's an alien. And what's our natural tendency when there's a famine? We want to run away. We want to go to a better place. We want to go somewhere where the grass is greener. So... Obviously, Isaac was thinking of going down to Egypt, but God said to him, don't do that. Stay in the land where the famine is. Stay in the land where the drought is. Remain there as an alien. What are you thinking of running away from at the moment? What? A bad marriage? A a financial situation? A, A difficult church? What do you want to run away with? Because we we do want to run away from the things that are causing us pain. A, A drought, a famine, causes pain. But God said, don't do that. Stay where you are. Of course, there are times when there's a change of season. There are times when God calls us to leave a church and move to another one. He never calls us to leave a marriage, by the way, and move to another one. But more often than not, God calls us to bloom exactly where he's planted us. I want to encourage you, if you're in a difficult place at the moment, if you're in a place that's uncomfortable, a place that you'd rather not be in, seriously seek God's face. God appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt, but remain in this land as an alien. And I believe that God's saying that to a few people today. I believe that God may well be saying that to you today. Do not run away from your problems, because God does his mightiest work 
in the middle of those problems. So the first thing, the counterintuitive thing that Isaac did, was not to run away from his problem. Let's take a look at the second thing that he did, because this is even more counterintuitive than remaining in the land of the Philistines as an alien in the middle of a drought. Verses 6 to 11 in Genesis chapter 26. So Isaac settled in Gerar. When the men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, Ah, oh, she's my sister. For he was afraid to say, My wife, thinking, or else the men of the place might kill me for the sake of Rebekah, because she's so attractive in her appearance. When Isaac had been there a long time, King Abimelech of the Philistines looked out of a window and saw him fondling his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech called for Isaac and said, So, she's your wife. Why then did you say she's my sister? Isaac said to him, because I thought I might die because of her. Abimelech said, what is this thing that you have done to us? One of the people might easily have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech warned all the people, saying, whoever touches this man or his wife shall be put to death. I think sometimes we think that I'm not good enough. Um, I've made mistakes. How can God possibly ever bless me? God knows who you are. God knows what you're made of. He made you from dust, and to dust you will return. He knows our frailties. He knows our weaknesses. And whilst that's no excuse for sin, the fact that we're not perfect doesn't mean that God doesn't want to bless us. In a moment, we're going to go to a break, and when we come back from that, I really want to look at this, this counterintuitive thing, this second counterintuitive thing that Isaac did in that land. But I want to come back to your situation. I want to come back to your problems. The things that perhaps you want to run away from. And I truly counsel you, if there's some problem that you instinctively, intuitively want to run away from, to get that before God. To say, God, this is a place I don't want to be in. This is a situation that's too difficult. What do you want me to do? And I guarantee you God will speak. I guarantee you God will give you the guidance you need. In my experience, nine times out of ten, in a difficult situation, God calls us to stay there. I've been called into churches sometimes where I've worshipped. I've never been a pastor of a church. But I've been called into difficult places in churches. And you want to run away. You want to leave. But God calls you. To stay. God wants to bless you right in the middle of your drought, right in the middle of your famine. But in order for Him to do that, sometimes we just have to stay exactly where He's put us. I just want to take this short break and tell you about our latest life application booklet. It's called Blessed. To be a blessing. Does God want to bless you? Yes, he does. But not just to fill you up. God wants to bless you so much that the blessing of God will overflow out of you into the lives of those around you. You are blessed to be a blessing. And I would love to send you a free copy of this booklet. The contact details on your screen right now. Get in touch with us. Request your free copy of Blessed to be a blessing, and may you experience the blessing of God and be God's blessing to many, many more people. All right, so how do you respond to the drought? Do you grumble? Do you complain? Do you go to God and say, God, why are you doing this to me? Or are you sitting in your drought, in your difficult situation, thinking to yourself, how can I cooperate with God? I wonder what God is up to. I, I wonder how can I join hands with God and be part of his mighty plan? See, the mistake that we often make is we think that it's all about us. We think, there's a drought. What am I going to do? How's God going to bless me? We think that the whole universe, all of God's plans revolve around us, but they simply don't. God has much bigger plans. God has much bigger purposes than just blessing you. So, when you're in a drought, when you're struggling in, in a place that you'd rather not be, how do you respond? Do you respond by grumbling and complaining? 
or by cooperating with God, by looking for opportunities to bless others, by looking for opportunities to plant good seed into the soil. All right, let's go back to God's word now, Genesis chapter 26, and look at this second counterintuitive thing that Isaac did in the middle of the drought. Beginning at verse 12, Isaac sowed seed in that land, and in the same year reaped a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him, and the man became rich. He prospered more and more until he became very wealthy. He had possessions of flocks and herds and, and a great household, so that the Philistines envied him. Now, the Philistines had stopped up and filled with earth all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the days of his father Abraham. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us. You have become too powerful for us. So what was the second thing that Isaac did? He planted seed in the land. God called him to remain in that land. And, and he could have said, grumble, 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 complain, complain, complain. God, when will you release me? God, when will you bless me? But not only did he remain in the land, it tells us that Isaac settled in the land. He became part of the community. He made it his home. In other words, he did it with a good heart. He cooperated with God, and then he did this second crazy thing. He sowed seed in the land in the middle of a drought. I have a good friend who's a farmer and a great supporter of our ministry. And Australia's been going through some pretty bad drought times of late. He has a farm, and he just prayed, and he felt God calling him to plant seed. Now, all of his neighbors thought he was crazy. This is not a fable. This is a true story. All his neighbors thought he was crazy. And yet, just at the right time, even though he'd planted seed into dry land, the rains came, the crop grew, and he reaped a harvest when no one else did. It seems crazy to plant seed in the middle of a drought. It would have to be the most counterintuitive thing that you could possibly do. But God called Isaac to stay. Listen to this. Isaac sowed seed in the land, and in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold. So what happens, you plant one seed of wheat, it produces multiple heads of grain, and one seed turns into a hundred. A hundredfold return on his investment. Because remember, seed costs money, and it's very expensive to buy seed in the middle of a drought, as my far farmer friend reminded me. What opportunities do you have in the middle of your drought to settle in that place, to cooperate with God with a good heart, with a heart that says, God, I, I don't understand exactly what you're doing here, but I want to cooperate. Show me where I can plant good seed. Who can I bless? Who can I help? What good deed could I do? How can I invest to get the kingdom returned for you, Lord? What opportunities has God put right under your nose, right now, to plant seed in the drought? That's what Isaac did. And look at how God blessed him. God blessed him to the point where not only did he get a hundredfold return that year, but he became wealthy. He had flocks and herds and, and a big household. And King Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, came and said to him, get out of here. You're being too successful. God's blessing you too much. That's how God works. He loves to see us step out in obedience and faith. And that's exactly what Isaac did. When God said, don't run away to Egypt, stay in this land, Isaac was obedient. And when God obviously led him to plant seed in the middle of the famine and the drought, Isaac did it in faith. Throughout this series, we're going to see that powerful combination over and over and over again in so many different Bible stories that I'm going to share with you. God wants to bless two things. He wants to bless obedience and faith, obedience and faith, obedience and faith together. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible 
to please God. For whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Friend, it's one thing to believe that God exists. You know, that's an easy thing for me to believe. Because I can say, yeah, sure, I I give intellectual assent to the fact that there's a God. But whoever wants to please God must not only believe that he exists, but also believe that God wants to bless them, that he rewards those who who seek him. In your life, in your situation, with what you have going on right now, in your heart of heart, Do you believe that God wants to reward you when you seek him? How few people turn to God in their drought? How few people go to God and seek him and draw close to him and say, Lord, I don't know what you're up to, but you are my King of Kings. You are my Lord of Lords. I will lift your name up above every other name. I will honour you above every other thing in this world. I will obey you and I will trust you in the middle of my drought. Friend, that is the place where God's blessing begins. Seek him in the middle of your drought. I want to go back again. I want to read this bit about Isaac again, about him planting seed and what happened. Because as I said earlier, the word of God is far more important than what I can say. Maybe just close your eyes and just let this soak into you. Let the Holy Spirit... Take the word and speak it into your heart because with all my heart, I believe that God wants you to have the sort of faith that says, yes, I believe that God wants to bless me in the middle of my drought. Come on, let's have another look. Isaac sowed seed in that land, not in any other land, not in the land that he wanted to go to, not in Egypt where he really wanted to run away to. Isaac planted seed in that land and in the same year he reaped a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him and the man became rich and he prospered more and more until he became very wealthy. He had possessions of flocks and herds and a great household so that the Philistines envied him. So just think about this. He comes into the land in the middle of a drought He does a crazy thing and plants seed in that drought. God blesses him. He reaps a hundredfold. He obviously uses that return wisely and he builds his wealth, he builds his flocks, he builds his household, he builds his herds to the point where the Philistines who own the land, who'd lived there for generations, to the point where the king of the Philistines is envious of this alien who trusted God. God and eventually they say get out of here you're being too successful for our liking I'm not suggesting for one moment that that's how God wants to bless you that's how God blessed Isaac but there are far greater blessings than financial returns I know that there are often times when I feel as though I'm the alien in the land we live in societies today that are rejecting Christianity, they're rejecting God, they're rejecting Jesus en masse. It's becoming difficult to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. We have to go against the flow. We often feel as though we're aliens in this land. But when you stay, when you stay where God's planted you, when you sow the good seed that he calls you to sow, whether it's a financial investment, whether it's an investment of time or energy or money or or humility or forgiveness, because, hey, forgiveness is an investment. Forgiving a difficult person is a sacrifice. Whatever God's calling you to sow, to plant in the land in which you feel as though you're an alien, why don't you start doing that? Instead of complaining and grumbling and, and, and all the things that you and I naturally want to do in the flesh, about that difficult marriage, that difficult wife, or that difficult husband, or that difficult thing, whatever it is in your life. Instead of grumbling and complaining and being downcast and dejected, 
plant the good seed in the soil. And just watch what God does. Firstly, I know he's going to do a work in your heart, as he has done so many times in my heart, to stop the grumbling and the complaining and to teach me something that I could only ever have learned in the middle of that drought anyway. And then watch the blessing of God flow in your life. Father, I pray for every man and woman and child who's watching this program today. I pray that this powerful word from you would take root in our heart. Lord, for all of those who are struggling as aliens in the land that you want them to stay in, Lord, give them a conviction today that they would remain there. Show them the good seed that they could plant in the middle of that drought. And may their harvest, your harvest, happen a hundredfold and more in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friend, I'm excited for you. I believe that God has spoken a word into your life today. And, and I would love to hear what harvest happens in your life through his word. God bless you. Well, that's all we have time for today. But before I go, I believe with all my heart that there is power in the word of God. Amen. And I would love to journey with you each and every day in the word. That's what our daily fresh devotional is all about. A powerful scripture verse together with some words of inspiration, hope and encouragement to help you be all that God made you to be, to help you do what God made you to do. Now, the Fresh Daily Devotional is completely free. You'll see the contact details on your screen right now. Get in touch with us to request your Fresh Daily Devotional. And may you be blessed as you receive the powerful, life-changing, life-transforming Word of God into your heart each and every day. I'm Bernie Diamond. You've been watching Christianity Works. I'll catch you again same time next week with another message of God's love, God's grace, and God's power for each one of us in Jesus Christ.